packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. Right, put your feet up for my perfect TV dinners. Like all chefs, good food is my life. And for me, TV dinners are all about recipes that are fuss-free, quick and easy to make, so however busy you are, you can always knock up brilliant food. My TV dinners need minimum shopping and rely on the staple ingredients you already have in the cupboard, so you can enjoy incredible dishes whenever you want. Starting with my delicious mushroom and leek pasta. This fantastic fast and simple pasta dish made with everyday ingredients just goes to prove you can eat good food whenever you want. Really important to put the water on first so you can just have it gently simmering away, ready for the pasta. While the water comes to the boil, start the sauce by slicing mushrooms. First off, fingers, one in front, two behind. Up and down. Then add olive oil to a hot frying pan. I want that nice colour on the mushrooms. Off the heat, lift it 10 seconds. And when you toss something, really important, you get all the ingredients at the end of the pan, push down and pull back. And that noise, that that's all the water coming out of the mushrooms. Next, finally chop a fat clove of garlic. Then prepare your leeks. Just take your knife and go down through the centre, turn it over, and again, into quarters. So you've got all that opening up. And then just rinse the top of that to get rid of any potential dirt or sand. It just breaks up into nice little quarters. Add all that leek into those mushrooms. Beautiful. And now, the secret is to get rid of that water inside the leek. As it cooks down, all the water's gone, you just left that really nice, intense flavour. Garlic's gone nice and crispy. Now, we're going to add a touch of chicken stock in there. Mmm, beautiful. Lasagna sheets. I'm just going to drop the sheets into the water. Lasagna sheets are an unusual choice for a dish like this, but they work brilliantly, although any type of pasta you've got in the cupboard will do. And just twist that pan. That stops any pasta actually sticking to the bottom of the pan. Chicken stock will reduce down by half, and it almost delays the bottom of the pan, basically washed all that wonderful flavour off. Turn the gas down and add a couple of tablespoons of cream. This just enriches the dish, bring it back up to the ball and let it simmer for three to four minutes. Now, the secret of the pasta is just taking it out a little early so you've got that nice texture. Hold up the sheet and just nip it. And you can feel your fingers in the centre. It's ready. Turn the sauce down and lay these beautiful sheets of lasagna into that sauce. I'm just going to turn the gas off now and let the pasta sit in there and absorb that amazing sauce. Finish with chopped fresh tarragon. It's a delicious herb that goes brilliantly well with mushrooms and leeks. Just let that sit and almost sort of infuse. To serve, I'm making a quick bruschetta by toasting fresh ciabatta bread. Two nice slices, drizzle that in olive oil. A little bit of garlic. Just rub the bread, the crust as well. The crust is what really takes that garlic. Now, pan for the bread, a little touch of olive oil. As it starts to smoke, bread in. But look at the pasta now. It's been stained by that amazing sauce. To serve, I want a nice spoon of my mushrooms, leeks, and cream. Then I'll take my pasta, just twist it and let it sit on top. That tarragon has just lifted everything. Bread on. And that's the beauty about something so simple that can be done in 20 minutes with everyday ingredients. A stunning pasta dish. Adding easy and versatile dishes like this to your repertoire is what cooking at home is all about. So you can always make great tasting food at the drop of a hat. With foolproof pasta recipes up your sleeve, you'll always be able to knock up a fantastic lunch or supper. Here are three more of my super fast pasta dishes that are bursting with flavour and cook in minutes. Kicking off with farfalle with ricotta, pancetta and peas.
Start by frying lardens in a large pan. These smoked chunks of bacon have a delicious deep salty flavor that makes them perfect with pasta. When the lardons start to brown, add finely chopped garlic and turn off the heat. Next, add farfalle to boiling salted water. Named after the Italian for butterflies, this bow-tied shaped pasta has a large surface area great for sticking to sauces. Just before the pasta is ready, add frozen peas to the boiling pasta water. Then when the pasta and the peas are cooked, drain and add to the lardons and the garlic. Spoon in creme fraiche and dot with lumps of creamy ricotta cheese. Season, then serve. Ready in just 12 minutes. Farfalli with ricotta, pancetta and peas. A delicious quick and easy supper that's ready when you are. My next pronto pasta dish is tagliatelle with quick sausage meat bolognese. First, boil dry tagliatelle in salted water. These long, thin ribbons of pasta come curled up in nests and take around 10 minutes to cook. Then add olive oil to a hot pan and fry finely chopped onion. Thinly slice garlic and sweat until soft. Next, remove the meat from your sausages by cutting open their skins and crumble into the pan. Fennel or Sicilian sausages are perfect for this dish, but any flavored sausage will do. When the meat has browned, add half cherry tomatoes. Season and add a few spoonfuls of the pasta cooking water as the starch thickens the sauce and helps it stick to the pasta. Drain the tagliatelle and add to the sausage meat sauce. Finish with freshly grated parmesan. Perfect when you're really busy but still want great tasting food fast. My amazing tagliatelle with quick sausage meat bolognese. My final pasta dish that's ready in a flash and packs a real flavor punch is spaghetti with chili, sardines and oregano. First, for the crunchy topping, heat olive oil in a frying pan. Add chopped garlic and breadcrumbs. Cook over medium heat until the breadcrumbs are golden. Season and drain on kitchen paper. For the sauce, add the oil from your sardines to a hot pan. Fry finely diced chili and chopped garlic. Next, cook dry spaghetti in boiling water. Then, chop tin sardines into chunks and add to the chili and garlic. Tin sardines are a brilliantly versatile ingredient to have in your cupboard. Packed with protein, full of super healthy omega-3 oils and delicious. Next, drain your pasta and combine with the sardine, chili and garlic mixture. Add leaves of fresh oregano and mix in handfuls of rocket. To serve, pile high and top with the crispy garlic breadcrumbs. Ready in under 15 minutes, spaghetti with chili, sardines and oregano. Healthy, hearty and full of flavour, perfect pasta in moments. Whether you're rushing to put your feet up in front of the telly and need something fast and tasty for the family or simply want something delicious to enjoy, these are three amazing pasta recipes you can learn by heart and cook in minutes. Beautiful. Now, here are five more of my essential cooking tips, starting with how to cook an ingredient that's perfect for a quick and easy TV dinner, chicken breasts. This has to be the most popular part of the chicken. Now, it's very versatile, incredibly tender, very lean, hardly any fat whatsoever. The secret is cooking it without it becoming dry. The first thing is to season it properly, both sides. Two tablespoons of olive oil, get the pan nice and hot, the secret now is to get a really nice colour on the skin. Really nice colour. No colour, no flavour. Skin side down. Tilt the pan so it cooks the back of the chicken breast where it's really nice and round and very fat. Let the pan do the work.
Chicken breast normally takes between sort of 10 and 12 minutes to cook properly. Now we've got the color on the skin. The skin's nice and crispy. We're going to deglaze the pan. Deglaze with masala. Now, masala is a sweet, fortified Italian wine. You can also use white wine. Masala in. Flambe. Burn off the alcohol, which gets rid of that really sort of harsh alcoholic flavor. Roll the chicken around the masala. Deglazing the pan basically means washing the pan and lifting off all that flavor stuck to the bottom of the frying pan and putting it into the sauce. Now, chicken stock. Bring that up to the boil and let it simmer for three to four minutes. It's really important to leave the chicken breast skin side up. The skin's nice and crispy, and it's important now the chicken cooks from underneath. As it starts cooking, it absorbs the stock. So in the center of the chicken, it stays nice and moist. Now the stock of the masala is reduced down, you can have the confidence to allow it to almost disappear. And look, the combination between the masala and the chicken stock is quite sweet, so it finishes the chicken with this really nice, delicious glaze on top. And there you go, a delicious, succulent chicken breast with the most amazing, flavoursome skin. Phenomenal. Soups make stunningly simple meals. My tip for adding incredible depth of flavour is to always keep your leftover parmesan rinds. Store them in the freezer, then add to the pan as the soup cooks and leaves to infuse. Then remove before serving, it's less waste and more taste. Another tip to take homemade soup to the next level, whisk in cubes of cold butter just before serving to get a glossy, velvety texture and a beautifully rich taste. Another fantastic standard for a fuss-free weekend eat is the classic baked potato. My tip for a great crispy skin is to use salt to your advantage. Simply add it to the outside before cooking and the salt will draw out the moisture in the oven as it bakes. A touch of salt gives you an amazingly crisp skin on chicken and fish too, as well as highlighting the flavor. Home roasted nuts make a delicious TV snack. My tip for peeling them with ease is to simply toast them in the oven for about 10 minutes, wrap in a tea towel and rub until the skins are removed. Perfect sprinkle with sea salt and so with a glass of wine. This is my ultimate cookery course, 100 recipes to stake your life on. Coming up, I'll be showing you my amazing sweet corn fritters. That is such a delicious recipe. But first, the key to whipping up my ultimate TV dinners is having a well-stocked store cupboard, and even with the basics like tin sardines, tomatoes, pasta or rice, it always pays to know how to buy the best. Next up, my shopping guide to all things pasta. When it comes to the sacred Italian staple, you'll be hard-pressed to find anyone who knows more than pasta supremo Antonio Saccomani. I love pasta so much, I have to eat it at least once a day. He's been selling perfect pasta in London, Soho, for over 35 years and eating great pasta for a lifetime. We make the best pasta in the world, uh, Italy. <laughs> Take away the pasta in Italy and the people die, you know, and that's it. <laughs> for a good, very good pasta, you need two ingredients. You need a, a good eggs and very good flour, and that's it. This is a uh, durum wheat flour. Look at that. It's so soft. This it cooks so quick. Couple of minutes in a boiling water, this thin like this. Couple of minutes, it's cooked. This shop is not, it's not big enough to store all the type of pasta. And this is the famous uh, spaghettoni al bronzo. This is penne, different shape. It's called fusilli, orecchiette, orzo, trofiette. Antonio's right. There's a mind-blowing array of incredible pasta types that are great to keep in your store cupboard. Here's my quick guide to some of the different shapes and sizes and how to use them. Small shapes like farfallini are perfect for making simple stews and soups more substantial and add an extra texture to dishes, like the classic Italian pasta soup, minestrone. Short tubes like penne are great for thick cream or tomato-based sauces, as the rigid edges hold more sauce for an incredibly flavor-packed mouthful. Long and thin, like the store cupboard essential spaghetti. The classic shape was invented in Naples, but every Italian region has its own spaghetti dish, from bolognese to carbonara, or my favorite, alla vongole. 
which is spaghetti with delicious steamed clams. Flat noodles shaped strands like fettuccine are perfect with a simple drizzle of olive oil or in rich buttery dishes as a little sauce goes a long way, coating the pasta evenly, stopping the strands from sticking together. Then pass the sheets, not just great for lasagnas, but amazing rolled into tubes and filled to make delicious cannelloni or used in quick supper dishes like my mushroom and leek pasta. Finally, speciality pastas, like this spaghetti made with squid ink. It has delicately sweet taste and an amazing jet black color. Great for when you want a delicious dinner that's a little bit different. Whatever shape you go for, always look out for the pastas that have been bronze cut. It means the dough was pressed through a bronze cutting die, which has a subtle rough texture, which helps the sauce stick. As well as all the dried types, pasta also comes fresh, which is brilliant for TV dinners, because it cooks super quick and tastes incredible too. In this shop, we make pasta every day. Look at that, that's beautiful. It's sad to eat it. This pasta is really, really yellow, because we use good quality of eggs. You can smell the eggs, they come through. It's so good, so fresh, you can even eat it raw like that. It lasts in the fridge two or three days. You can even freeze it and uh, you won't change taste. Whether fresh or dried, pasta's so versatile and quick to cook, it's the perfect TV dinner. So go out, stock up on new shapes, and you'll soon be turning out dishes that would make Pasta Pro Antonio very proud. It looks so nice, so good, so healthy. You know, and, uh, that's it can resist. We all lead busy lives, but that doesn't mean you have to compromise when it comes to cooking great food. For me, the secret is having recipes you can depend on and a store cupboard full of staple ingredients that can be transformed into quick, delicious dinners on demand. So, shop smart, stock up, and whether you're feeding two or 20, you'll always be ready to cook up something incredible. My next tasty dish uses simple and cheap store cupboard ingredients with stunning results and takes minutes to make. Sweet corn fritters and yogurt dip. It's brilliant to have a number of great recipes up your sleeve to rely on. And let's be honest, we've all got a tin of sweet corn somewhere, so I'm going to show you how to make the most amazing fritter. First off, the mixture. Take your flour, sieve. Really important to sieve the flour. That stops the mixture from having any lumps in there. And just before you get to the end, I want to put half a teaspoon of baking powder. The baking powder gives the mixture some lift in and just sieve that through. Touch of salt and pepper. Next, an egg. And about four tablespoons of milk. And give that a little whisk. Now, just put a little drizzle of olive oil in there. That helps to relax the mixture. Whisk that in. Make sure we got rid of all those lumps. So look, I want a nice, smooth, almost like a cake mixture. OK. Next, take the seeds out of a chilli to lower the heat. Roll the chilli, so give it a really good shake. Tap them out, slice in half into quarter, and each quarter in half and chop through. It's a really nice, quick way of slicing a chilli into the mixture. Spring onion, take off that outside layer of the spring onion, top and tail, slice it at an angle. So I've got a bit of texture running through the mixture. I want that nice crunch in coriander. Just slice through, nice and gently. And get that in there. Next to the sweet corn. Now, drain it from the tin and just pat it dry so it doesn't make the mixture too wet. Give that a nice mix. You can see now I've got two thirds ingredients and one third of the mixture to bind together. That's the secret of a good fritter, so you're, you're biting into excitement, not sort of dough. Pan on, olive oil in, nice and hot. Get a nice big dessert spoon. You know, there's one nice portion. In. Space the fritters evenly around the pan in a clockwise direction, so you always know which one to turn first. Just with the back of your spoon, sort of spread them out a little bit. OK. Palette knife. Just check. You're happy with the colour? 
and turn over. Beautiful. Now for the chilli yoghurt dressing. Deseed and finely chop a red chilli and add to a pot of natural yoghurt. And then some fresh lime. Finish with chopped coriander. Coriander in. And give that a nice mix up. That chilli just lifts it. The lime gives it that nice tanginess. The fritters, they smell amazing. And with the sauce, it tastes fantastic. That is such a delicious recipe using a tin of sweet corn from your cupboard. Amazing. Follow my ultimate cookery course, bursting with valuable lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. And you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking. Packed with cooking tips, information, and 100 recipes to stake your life on. So sit back and enjoy my delicious, simple suppers. One of my essential mantras for becoming a better cook is it's all about building your confidence. And the way to do that is with practice. The key is to have a repertoire of easy dishes you want to cook and eat time and time again. And soon, you'll be on your way to becoming a kitchen demon. My first dish keeps it simple, but delivers big time on flavor. So it's sure to become a regular quick supper fix. Spicy tuna fish cakes. I love this recipe. Why? Because it turns this humble ingredient, a can of tuna, into something delicious. Just open up and drain the tuna into a sieve. Just slightly flake that. Don't press it too hard, otherwise you'll dry out the tuna. Now, these are water chestnuts. Just slice them nice and thin. You can buy them anywhere, any supermarket. Chestnuts in. Fresh ginger. Get rid of that rough skin on the outside. By grating the ginger, you get to get all that really nice sort of juice in. Take your spring onions and just slice on an angle. I like the texture of the water chestnut with a spring onion. A touch of fresh coriander. Lovely. Next, remove the seeds from a chili to reduce its heat without losing any flavor and finely chop. Chilies in. Kaffir lime leaves. Roll them up nice and tight. Run your knife down the center once and just chop. And that makes the fish cake nice and fragrant. Touch of salt, touch of pepper. Fish sauce. Just lightly season the tuna to bind all those wonderful ingredients. Two whole eggs. And give that a nice little whisk. And then add your eggs. Get your hands in there and start mixing. Mm. Get the mixture, roll it from hand to hand with the palm, pat them down nicely. To cook, add a little ground oil to a hot pan. Like the face of a clock, we're gonna go from 12 all the way around. First one in. These fish cakes only take a few minutes to cook, so keeping track of the order they go in the pan means you know which one to turn first. Give the pan a nice, gentle little shake. Make sure that nothing's sticking to the bottom. Spatula, two fingers on top, turn them over. Beautiful. That crackling noise is something you always want because the tuna's already cooked, so we just lightly fry them to get the nice crisp outside and gently take them out. They smell incredible. Let them sit there. We're going to make a really nice, delicious, simple dipping sauce. Start off a little pinch of sugar. Fish sauce, two tablespoons. That gives it the saltiness. One tablespoon of rice wine vinegar and some fresh lime juice. Squeeze all that lime in there. Your fresh coriander. Lots of coriander. And in. 
give that a little mix. And then you have the most amazing spicy tuna fish cakes. Who would have thought something as delicious as that can come out of a can? A simple supper in minutes that's so mouth-wateringly easy and delicious, you're guaranteed to cook it again and again. When it comes to simple cooking, there are two basic bits of kit I'm never without that will save you time and effort in the kitchen. A grater and a peeler. The swivel peeler, a stainless steel one. Absolutely incredible. It's almost like a lifesaver in the kitchen because they are so quick, so light. Swivel blade, so you've got so much more flexibility. You can actually go around the vegetable. And we call it a speed peeler in the professional kitchen because it does literally, absolutely, rapidly peels your vegetables. You have minimal waste. Good peelers cost from a couple of quid and are great for everything from peeling veg to finely slicing cheese and making shards of chocolate. A good comfortable grip and a sharp stainless steel blade ensures you'll always work fast. The box grater is another great versatile kitchen tool and with its planes for coarse grating, fine grating and super fine, as well as blades for slicing, it's perfect for everything from pureeing ginger and zesting lemons to shredding onions super small so they can caramelise in a flash and be sure to get a solid handle to hold it firm. And it's got such volume inside, it doesn't crush anything up, so... I always prefer to grate onto a tray or into a bowl, so you don't have to move it again. Grating onto the board, you've always got to lift it up and place it in, so... Place the grater into a bowl and grate. Two simple but essential speedy bits of kit, guaranteed to make your life in the kitchen easier. Bread is a brilliant base for delicious, super-fast lunches and suppers. Here are three of my deliciously simple recipes that transform a humble bit of bread into a gastronomic treat. First up, flatbreads with fennel and feta. Add olive oil to a flatbread. Then place in a hot frying pan and toast until crisp and golden on both sides. These deliciously versatile breads are made without yeast and are available in good supermarkets and local Middle Eastern shops. Next, thinly slice fresh fennel and scatter over the toasted flatbread. Then, toast aromatic fennel seeds in a hot, dry pan and sprinkle on top. Crumble over wonderfully tangy feta cheese. Finish with a drizzle of sweet and sticky pomegranate molasses. Bread transformed before your eyes. Flatbreads with fennel and feta, simple, delicious, and ready to eat in minutes. My next recipe that turns a hunk of bread into a stunning dish is bruschetta with garlic, tomatoes, capers, and pecorino. Start by slicing a baguette diagonally to get a large surface area so it holds more of the delicious topping. Drizzle the bread with extra virgin olive oil, then place it oil side down onto a scorching hot griddle. When the bread is beautifully charred, remove and rub with a peeled clove of garlic, paying attention to the edges. Next, half sweet cherry tomatoes and rub the juices into the toasted garlic bread. Then simply crush on top. Next, slice and scatter over tangy caper berries. And use a veg peeler to add shavings of salty pecorino cheese. Finally, drizzle with extra virgin olive oil and add a twist of black pepper. Fantastic fresh flavors in the flash of a griddle pan. Toast has never tasted so good. Perfect for a simple light supper or an easy lunch. My next dish is a cannellini bean crostini with anchovy and olive oil. First, for the topping, heat olive oil in a frying pan. Add tin cannellini beans along with the juices. Once heated, gently mash the beans with a fork. Then add sliced black olives. Roughly chopped parsley, and a splash of sherry vinegar. Season and leave on a gentle heat. Next, half a fresh ciabatta and splash with extra virgin olive oil. Heat a griddle pan until smoking. 
and toast the bread oil side down, pressing it into the pan to char evenly. To serve, top the toasted chipata with a cannellini bean mixture and finish with chopped anchovies. Packed with bold flavours, so easy you can always make it blindfolded. Ready in under 10 minutes, but eaten in seconds. Three different breads, three fantastic recipes, proof that even when you're pressed for time, you can still eat like a king. Incredible. Welcome back to my ultimate cookery course. These are my perfect TV dinners. Next up, my guide to getting the best ingredients for your money. My shopping mantra is very simple. First, rely on your senses. Make sure whatever you're buying, it looks, smells, and really feels good. And if you get the chance to taste it before you buy it, then do it. Second, is to recognize that knowledge is absolutely crucial. The more you know about where your ingredients are from and how they're produced, the better. So, don't be scared. Ask lots of questions and learn. And when you want a simple supper, herbs are perfect to use in your cooking. They add vibrancy and an amazing depth of flavour, and once you get the hang of them, they are so quick and simple to use. And one woman who really knows these chef's best friends is expert herb grower Lorraine Melton. I love herbs. I love the way you can cook with them. I love the smell of them. She's been growing an incredible array of herbs in the wet Cambridgeshire countryside for over 20 years and can smell a bay from a basil at 50 paces. We grow about 150 varieties of herbs. It's always interesting to grow new varieties, see what they taste like, see what they smell like. It gets a bit addictive after a while. Broadly speaking, you get harder herbs and softer herbs. Softer herbs are things like parsley, basil, rocket, coriander. We grow um, two main types of parsley. We've got flat leaf parsley and curly parsley. Flavour-wise, I think they're very similar, although a lot of people would say that the flat leaf parsley has got a stronger, more aromatic flavour. This is your common basil, sweet genovese. This is um, a purple variety called Reuben. We do Greek basil, Thai basil, holy basil. When you're looking for a basil, you want a bright, fresh basil, nice leaves, no blemishes, and nice, strong stems. It's got a lot of oils in it, and it's very strong smelling. It just tastes of summer, basil. Lorraine certainly knows her stuff, and she's right. Soft herbs are delicate, so for maximum flavor, always use them at the end of cooking, or simply add as they are to cold dishes. Here are my top five soft herbs that I could never live without. Basil, as Lorraine said, it comes in many types, all with an amazing sweet pungent flavor. Great blitzed in pestos, sprinkled whole over mozzarella, and showing its versatility, it even makes a wonderful ice cream. Parsley, beautifully earthy and intensely fresh. Use both the leaves and the stem for great depth of flavor in savory dressing, soups, and salads. Coriander. For an amazing hint of citrus, often used in Thai dishes, coriander is perfect in curries and chutneys, but it bruises easily, so treat it with care. Tarragon, a staple of French cooking. This has long, soft green leaves and a distinct aniseed flavor, great with chicken or in rich, creamy sauces. Finally, chervil. Both mild and sweet, a perfect pairing with fish, an incredible mix simply with melted butter for a quick sauce. Those are my favorite soft herbs. What about the hard ones? The harder ones tend to be um, a more woody plant. Things like thyme, rosemary. You've got your common thyme, which is your ordinary, general, bog-standard cooking thyme. And then you've got things like lemon thyme. We do an orange thyme, which is actually one of my favourites. It smells like thyme, but it's got a deep, sort of musky scent as well, which is just going to give you a slightly different flavour in your dish. Hard herbs, like thyme, can take more intense cooking than soft herbs, so they're great in stews, roasts or pan frying. Choose the right one and you can add wonderful depth of flavor to your dishes. Here are my top five I use day in and day out. Rosemary, amazingly robust with great bittersweet green leaves. It's a classic paired with lamb, delicious sprinkled over speciality breads like focaccia or great as toppings for fruity sorbets. Lorraine's favorite, thyme, a heady aromatic pungent herb which adds delicious flavor to a Sunday roast. It's amazing with wild mushrooms and is perfect in marinades. Oregano, warm and full of delicious aromatic oils. A staple of great Italian dishes and perfect sprinkled on pizzas or in pasta sauces. Sage, a strong tasting herb with a deliciously bitter flavor, incredible in stuffings and with rich meats like pork or duck. Finally, bay, bittersweet and spicy. It's delicious simmered in soups, stocks and risottos, and just as good dried or fresh. 
growing herbs is a lot easier than people think it is. On window boxes, in balconies, and it's great. You can just open your window, put your hand out and snip some off. When you're out looking for herbs, make sure they look nice and healthy, no blemishes, stems look strong. They should just spring back, so nice springy sort of herbs. Smell, obviously, is quite important. Not all things smell, but obviously, if you think it's one that's going to smell like lemon thyme, it should have a nice, fresh lemon scent. And obviously, the final one is taste. You can tip a bit off and taste your herbs, and you can see what they taste like then. Whether bought from a supermarket or picked from your window box, herbs are a great way to add fresh flavours to your dishes. Perfect for delicious, simple suppers. Even if you've got a super busy lifestyle, it doesn't mean missing out on delicious desserts. They just have to be simple to make. When it comes to cooking at home, puddings should always be a pleasure and never a chore. And homemade puds are 100% guaranteed to impress. My next recipe has only two main ingredients, but simplicity doesn't mean food can't taste out of this world. Incredible griddled pineapple with spiced caramel. If you're making a dessert for one or two, it's got to be quick and easy. This sumptuous, delicious griddled pineapple fits the bill perfectly. Pineapple. A way of testing it's nice and ripe. The top of the leaves come out. Perfect, ready to go. Always cut a pineapple with a serrated edge knife. Slice off the bottom. Turn it back over and slice the top part. Now, keep that for later. Look at the core, the center of the pineapple, and slice down, directly in half. Slice that in half. Take each quarter and slice them. It smells incredible. Lay it down flat and just slice that core off. So you've got this perfect sort of boat of pineapple. Slice underneath, but stop as you get right at the end. Slicing around the skin will make the pineapple easier to eat, but leaving it attached gives you more control as it cooks. Next, heat a griddle pan as hot as you can. Start off in the corner and push it down. So you really mark the pineapple. Two minutes on each side, and then just turn them. Really nice colour on there, like that. Beautiful. I'm going to sprinkle them with a little touch of sugar. It's going to glaze them. Now, slice the top. Take out these beautiful glazed slices of pineapple. Like that. Next up, the spice caramel. Now, start off with your pan. Nice and hot. Sprinkle four tablespoons of sugar in there. Just flatten it. Then, add the seeds from a fresh vanilla pod. In a small dusting of Chinese fine spice. Never stir caramel. Let it sort of bubble and transform. Here she goes. Now I've got the colour. I want it. That's the perfect colour. Off with the gas. In with the butter. And then a couple of tablespoons of cream. Lovely. And then give that a little whisk. Add the rest of your cream. Nice. And just drip that spicy caramel over your pineapple. Mmm. Wow. Simple, elegant and seriously impressive. Griddle pineapple with spiced caramel. A delicious treat all to yourself that tastes even better shared. Next, my tricks of the trade and kitchen tips. First up, the proper way to chop fresh herbs to get maximum flavour. Chopping herbs, the secret is to chop them, not bruise them. Now, basil. This is a soft herb, so treat it with some respect. When people go mad chopping herbs, all the goodness comes out on the board. I want the goodness left inside the basil. Place them all inside one another with the largest leaf at the bottom, and it's almost like rolling a cigar. Large one at the bottom, small ones in the centre, and then look, place them down together, and just roll them nice and gently, don't bruise them. Step one, rolled. Ready to slice. Sharp knife, imperative. Fingers tucked in. The bottom part 
of your knuckle is the guide between you and the herbs. That there stops you from cutting your finger. Really important to get comfortable with the knife and just practice rolling the knife across the board and relaxing that wrist. It's all in the wrist action. So, herbs up, fingernails tucked underneath and just up and down, up and down. And there you have a chopped basil that's not bruised and smelling very fragrant. Right, coriander. So you get the bunch of coriander, hold it down, and just lightly shave the leaves off the stalks. Bunch them up together, and then just, again, let the knife do the work. Tuck the fingernails in, and just chop once, and once only. Don't hack it, just chop it. You can always identify when you've bruised the herb. When you've removed the herbs off the board, and there's a big green patch. Mmm, full of flavour, and none of the goodness is left on the chopping board. A great tip for using leftover herbs, simply chop finely, mix into butter, roll up in cling film and freeze. Then when you want a herby hit, cut into slices and melt over steaks, chicken or veg. Asparagus is great for a simple supper. To prepare, always remove the lower woody stem by gently bending, and the asparagus will snap at the perfect point then boil or steam and serve with a little of my herb butter. For a cracking soft boiled egg, simply place your egg in boiling water, add a splash of vinegar and cook for exactly eight minutes. Then plunge into ice water. The vinegar helps the shell peel off easily and the ice water stops the egg from cooking, giving you the perfect runny yolk. For fuss-free salad dressings, simply add the ingredients into a jam jar. Screw the lid on tightly and shake to combine in seconds. There's no need to wash up a whisk, and the jar's ready-made to store any leftovers. Follow my ultimate cookery course, bursting with valuable lessons, top tips, and 100 recipes to stake your life on, and you'll literally be cooking yourself into a better chef. Many of these amazing recipes are on my app. Please check out the App Store for details. Go on, get cooking.